DIY programming car keys on your newer cars. What options are available? We're gonna cover one of them and we're gonna do an unboxing today. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. As you can see, sitting on the bench next to me here is a blow molded case with, curiously, a giant Android looking something. And those of you who are clicking into this video, you already know what it's about. This is the Autel KM100X. We're gonna do an unboxing, we're gonna do a feature deep dive, and we're gonna just see what's included in here and what the initial kind of boot up looks like. And really why I ultimately picked this when there were other options available. So to start off with looking on the back of the box, it has just kind of the Coles Notes version of what this does. It says it's compatible with Autel Universal Key to program keys for more than 700 models. I'm actually really excited about that. I'm gonna give you more details about that when we get into the unboxing part of this video. Uh, it also covers programs Universal Key for today's most popular vehicles, including BMW, Ford, GM, and Chrysler models. So you can buy generic keys off of Amazon, off eBay, AliExpress, whatever, and this will program those keys. So it's a very significant cost savings versus going to the dealership and paying top dollar for a factory certified key and programming it yourself. Key generation is completed in 60 seconds with the speed up by 50%. Now the speed up measurement is not from this tool versus um, the older version of this tool, they're talking about the old days. Now the old days for me was using the CK100, which seemed to take forever, especially on the vehicles that had uh, ignition lockout sequence that would be 10 to 15, sometimes 30 minutes that you had to sit and wait for the vehicle to have the security system bypassed before it would enable you the ability to program a new key. Now, this does have the ability to bypass that in many cases, but not all cases. So we're not gonna deep dive into which vehicles are which, but know that some vehicles will program a lot faster. Supports multiple key button programming options. That's talking about is on the key fob, you have the ability to swap what the function is. That's especially important if you've got a key where you hit the unlock button and it locks the cars, for example. In that case, you can go in and you can swap the lock and unlock button so that the graphic, the, the picture on the key fob matches the actual functionality of the key. And that's more of a function of the universal keys that you're gonna use on here because the buttons aren't gonna always match the what the dealer option key was. So this allows you to make sense for your customers essentially. Supports transponder detection, clone, read, and write. And that's really important for the ability to test what the transponder frequency is and read the code off of that and then essentially you can clone that key. You can clone it or you can actually program the key to the car. There's two different ways to do that. Those of you who are in the locksmith community, you already know what a lot of these tools are really gonna be. So I'm just, I'm more speaking to the newbie, the guy who's wondering, you know, is it worth it to buy one of these and try doing this myself or do I wanna pay a professional or go to the dealer? That's really what we're dealing with here. Guided user instructions for fast and accurate key programming. Now that's really important because the old days, again, when I was using my CK100, um, you had to guess a lot. Now they did their best to guide you through, but the guidance was not great. So it looks like this is a lot better. It walks you through each step and it's actually a lot more clear what you're supposed to be doing at each step so that you have less chance to have to redo or reattempt to program that ignition. Wireless 5.5 inch touchscreen tablet with a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor running Android 9. I've got the automotive scanner, which is also Android based. It's really good. It makes it so that these tools, tools like this that would have been totally out of reach before are within reach now. So this kind of tool would have been many thousands of dollars years ago but now that they can just load up the software onto Android, add some custom modules that work off of that Android device, allows them to bring the cost significantly cheaper for a tool such as this. We'll talk about the price very shortly. And it's got a lithium polymer battery with longer battery life. Awesome. Time to get into the unboxing. Now I'm always careful to try and save all this stuff, but once I take this out of the case, I know it's never going back in the case. But here we go. We'll give you guys the first look at it. I think this is right side up, let's find out. Okay, that is right side up, whoa. Okay, so right off the bat, what you saw there 
was our universal key. This comes with two programmable universal keys. I'm gonna open these up just to see what we get. Now, they say that you will get random keys. So they don't control what keys you get, they just reach in the bin and send you two of whatever keys they've got. In my case, I've got these two keys. I've got one that has the lock, unlock, and the trunk open function. And this one has the lock, unlock, trunk open, and the hazard light, or it's probably more of like a panic button. Also inside these bags, it's got a little sticker that tells everyone this is an Autel key, which you can stick on the back. Now these remotes do not come with batteries. You will need to get some batteries to put in them. Uh, and that's why the lights aren't blinking, but these are the I keys, the programmable key. So the first question you're gonna have is, do I have to get specific keys for specific cars? The answer is no. These universal keys can be programmed for any car. So any car that this device will work with, you can program this key to be a key, an actual key for that car, and then you pair this key to that car. This would allow someone like me, who's a small time key programmer, to have just a few keys, and then you can program this to any car you want. So in my case, my son's Nissan needs a new key. So I'm gonna use one of these keys to program to his Nissan. I could also program this to a BMW, or to a Mercedes, or to a GM, or to a Ford, or any other vehicle that I want. It's not just limited. And these are reprogrammable. So you can program it to the vehicle, and then use it and then unprogram it from the vehicle and then save it for a different vehicle. The reason that would be handy is sometimes you need to have two keys for uh, programming for like, especially for Ford, for example, you need to have two factory keys before you can program a third. So you could program one of these to be the factory key. And then if they have one key already, then you have the two factory keys, you program their third key to the vehicle and then you take this key away you remove the programming and then reuse it for a different vehicle it allows you the flexibility in your programming to really have a key available if you need it so these are really cool i don't love this one or hate this one it is what it is also in this case is this bag full of goodies first off is this i promise that you are never ever going to use this i promise you you're not going to use this what is this well i'll show you this is a reprogramming cable so what it allows you to do is to solder these wires onto a factory key fob from a car and it allows you to connect it up and then wipe it out it allows you to create a factory blank key fob that can be reprogrammed so this is good for somebody who has a hard time finding a key fob that they're looking for they can buy a used one that's already been programmed to somebody's vehicle solder this on factory refresh it and then use this hardware to program it to a new vehicle the reason you're never going to use this is because it's not cost effective it will save you a little money to buy the fob because you can buy it used but the time that it would take for you to open that fob, solder this on, virginize it, and then reprogram it, it's just, nobody's gonna pay you that. Like for me, in my case, I would need to charge like four or $500 for this service to make it worth it. And it, at that point, it's cheaper to just buy an iKey and program the iKey to the vehicle than using this. So I promise you are never ever going to use that. It also comes with a USB-A to USB-C cord. This is great for charging the device. It comes with this plug-in charger, so you can plug this into the wall and then plug this into the device to charge it. This is, if my eyes don't fail me, it is a five volt, two amp output. So it actually, it's got some weight to it. It's not just a cheap charger and it would charge the tablet rather quickly. And then there's this. And what this is, is a USB-C to USB-C port, which you are going to use this a lot, a lot more than you think. You will use it a lot. And that's all that's in that bag. We've also got what's inside this case sheet, which I'm already showing you what's inside the case. So you don't need to read this sheet. And we've got this, which is a quick reference guide. And on the back it says, scan the above QR code to visit our website, create an Autel ID and register the tool with device's serial number and password. So you can register this device online. Uh, it does come with, it says before you use it, you should connect it to the internet and make sure that it's been updated, which is a great idea. And, and that's that for that. 
Now there's two things left in here. This guy right here, this is the OBD2 dongle, so it will connect up. And it comes with a flashlight. So when I push this button, you guys can see. Now you're probably wondering what the heck is that flashlight for? You're gonna use it a lot, I promise you. Cause when you're going to plug this thing in and you can't see underneath someone's car, you just go like this, you can shine that all in, you can light it up, you can find the port and then plug it into that port. It also then has a power indicator to say if it's powered up and it should sync up. On the back side, it has a USB-C hole, which curiously, will allow the cord that I said you're going to use a lot to plug into. Now, the reason you're going to use that a lot is because this is the actual device. Now, it has a USB-C port in the bottom there, which this can plug into. And when you're plugged in like this, it will do two things. It will communicate through USB, which is required for some of the programming that you're going to do. You can't always do wireless programming. You can sometimes, and when you plug it in, you can just turn this on and it will just connect up and it will work. Many times it will not, and when it does not, you need to plug this cord in, which will charge it and handle the communications. For me, I tend to leave the device plugged in because it's just more stable and then it charges it. So we'll see if it turns on here. It is turning on. It would also charge through this port, so then it's just not gonna be dead ever. So typically, I would just leave this in my car and just have it with me all the time. Now, this is the KM100X. Now, if you're looking to buy one, there's a couple models available. There's the KM100, the KM100X, and the KM100E. Now, you're gonna wonder, what is the difference? The difference that I could find was that they say the KM100X does not support free updates, whereas the KM100 or the 100E supports free lifetime updates. Now there is a price difference. The KM100X in Canada, you're able to get for about $600. For the KM100, you're gonna be looking at $750 roughly. So in the US, probably you can get this one, the KM100X. They say that this one does not support free lifetime updates and that's the biggest difference however when i bought this on amazon it said free lifetime updates so i'm having a hard time getting confirmed information so what i've done i've connected to wi-fi i've registered this device i want to just hit this update button and see if it will allow me to do an update there's a good chance because this is the first year of use that i will get free updates for at least a year so the real question will be after a year do i continue to get free lifetime updates. The nice thing is, uh, I can say, I've typed around on the screen already a little bit. It's very responsive, it's quite quick. Even though it's only using Android 9, like it, it swipes around nice and smooth. When I touch the screen, it, it responds quickly. So you can see like it, it reacts and it's loading and then it's working and then it, it goes into all the menus. So it's, it's not like it's a low spec, even though it is running only Android 9, but it, it's very smooth. I like the interface. So now it, it's saying that I've got 18 updates available here. So I'm gonna just go. So it immediately has a system program update, which you definitely wanna do. That's gonna increase stability and functionality of it. But it also has uh, vehicle specific updates that will allow you to add new models as they become available and that sort of thing. Currently this supports up to 2022 models. And I would assume with future updates that it would support 2023, 2024, and so on. This could be a very future-proof device for you for a very long time with those free updates. So that is something that it, you might wanna keep in mind. So for now, I'm gonna take the chance that the Amazon listing was right and that it does truly give me free updates for life. I won't know for at least a year when this current license key expires essentially and I'll see if it keeps giving me updates. Now, what was the competition for this? I was looking at this or the X-Horse Key Tool Max Pro. Now, ultimately I went for the Autel, not because of anything in particular, and my reasons are somewhat petty, if you will. I prefer the design of this, kind of how it's designed. When I looked at the user interface, I liked the user interface on this better. When I looked at key compatibility, I was getting such conflicting information that it was impossible to decide which one is air quotes 
better than the other and that's largely because they say okay well this one won't do everything and that one won't do everything and some guys say that this one does most of what they're looking for other guys say the x tool does most of what they're looking for i had to look at kind of the region they were in so the x tool guys are mostly over in europe from what I could tell. And I'm in North America, in Canada specifically, so I was looking for vehicles that are more Canadian specific vehicles. So I don't know how good the support for BMW, Mercedes, um, Audi, Volkswagen, I don't know how good that is for this tool, whereas the X tool potentially would be a little bit better. One thing that I have heard most people say is stay away from BMW with this and for the most part, I don't have a lot of customers looking for BMW keys anyway, so I'm gonna take my chances with that. If this tool doesn't cover it, I always have my, my CK100 key programmer, which has been rock solid, but it only covers up to about 2013 or 14, whereas this will fill the gap to bring me all the way up to current plus some of the even older vehicles that I've got some overlap. So I hopefully have given you enough information to at least help you understand which programming tool you want to buy. I know it's confusing and you're probably gonna find a lot of questions. This is a deep rabbit hole. There's a lot of people who are very, very smart in this industry who use these tools every single day. And when you jump on a forum or the Facebook group and ask questions, they condescendingly talk down to you for being so stupid for not just knowing the answer to the question. I'm hoping to help clear up some of those questions through videos such as this. If you have any questions you're wondering that I haven't covered, then go ahead and ask in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer those questions. As I use this tool, I will make other videos saying, here's how to use the tool for this so that you can see it in action. Today, unfortunately, as you can see, I'm sitting in my studio. I'm not trying to program a vehicle right now, but I will be soon and we will give it a try at that time and I'll bring you guys along for that journey too. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.